All right, so this video um, is meant to outline and discuss uh, some of the points brought up by David Schmitz in his book, Elements of Justice, on the subject of equal shares, uh, equal treatment, um, and equal opportunity. Now, there's a lot to think about here, but uh, if Schmitz is right, um, then many kinds of inequality um, aren't a sign of disrespect um, and aren't a threat to our well-being. Indeed, uh, endorsing any kind of equality uh, means that we are also endorsing, uh, at the same time, uh, a whole lot of inequality. Okay, so Schmidt starts his discussion uh, talking about equal shares a little bit. Um, he says equal shares is a really appropriate way of distributing goods um, sometimes. When? Well, when we have a distributional problem, that is to say a question about how to distribute goods, uh, that no one has a prior claim to, um, equal shares has three distinct advantages. Uh, advantage number one, um, it avoids all sorts of conflicts arising from envy. Um, so to the degree that it prevents uh, certain types of conflict over distribution of goods, then it's a good thing. Uh, it's mutually respectful. Um, equal shares uh, signals that other people are equal to us, right? So it's a form of respect. Um, and finally, uh, if no one has any uh, evident claim to anything, uh, then equal shares is mutually beneficial. We both gain. Uh, the prior state of being, or the prior state of things, was that nobody had anything. Uh, now, uh, both of us have something. And to that degree, it's mutually beneficial. Now, uh, equal shares is a much more controversial rule for distributing goods, uh, where we don't all arrive at the same place at the same time. If one of us has been working on uh, or with a particular good for some time now, uh, and then someone else comes along demanding an equal share, uh, it no longer seems like equal shares is a mutually respectful solution, right? Nor is it mutually beneficial, uh, nor is it particularly good at avoiding conflicts. Presumably the person who is dispossessed uh, is now going to have a reason to complain. Um, Equal shares is also going to be controversial when uh, other moral considerations uh, are at play, right? So uh, it, let's say that one of us really needs a larger share and the other doesn't need that larger share. Uh, maybe we can justify a departure from equal shares without disrespecting anyone if we pay specific attention to the needs of each and every one. Okay. Equal shares is also a lot more controversial when there is no central distributor, right? When there is no one person doing any kind of distributing. Uh, so unequal shares is going to be a sign of disrespect when uh, it signals, that is to say, the, rece the receiving of unequal shares signals that one person uh, is held in lower esteem than another person, right? If I ask for a job, for instance, uh, as a teacher in the Montgomery County High School system in Tennessee, and the superintendent says, well, we really need you. Um, we really have a job for you, but we can only afford to pay us $35,000 because that's what the state legislature allocated to us. Um, and I say, okay, sure, I'll, I'll take the job. Uh, but then my friend Jeff uh, asks for the same teaching job, teaching math or English or what have you, uh, in Christian County, Kentucky, right across the border um, from Montgomery County. Uh, and uh, Christian County can offer to, can afford to offer him forty thousand dollars for doing exactly the same job. It's not clear that anybody's disrespected me, right? Montgomery County didn't disrespect me by giving me only thirty five thousand dollars, and um, Christian County didn't disrespect me by giving my friend Jeff um, more money. Uh, and the reason why there was no disrespect is because there's no comparison. There's no central distributor. It wasn't one person treating us differently. It was two different people treating us the way they could, right, or the way they could afford to. Uh, so if, uh, if the good is different and if the distribution system is different and if there's a different distributor, it's not clear that unequal shares is a really a big problem. Um, Schmitz wants to make the point that equal shares is often mistaken for unequal treatment. That is to say, when we s complain about one person having more than another, what we're really complaining about um, is unequal treatment, not unequal shares. Um, An equal treatment will, does not imply equal shares. For example, I as a college professor, uh, if I gave the same grade to two students whose work 
is of radically different quality. One student's work is terrible, and the other student's work is great, and I give them equal grades. So in that sense, I give them a kind of equal share. Um, I haven't really treated them equally now, have I? Right? I've treated the performance of the better student as somehow counting for less as the performance of the worst student right? by giving them the same grade. Um, and I think similarly when uh, women demand equal pay for equal work, what they're demanding is that their work be treated the same way as a man's, right? treated equally as a man's. Not that they should always be this paid the same as a man, right? but that their work be treated the same way in as much as there's someone doing the distributing and doing the treating. Um, okay, final point that Schmitz makes um, on equal shares and equal treatment is that even when equal shares is a good idea and equal treatment is appropriate, it doesn't follow that equalization is a good thing, right? Let me give you an example. You've got a problem. Someone just stole 20 bucks out of your wallet and is currently running down the street away from you as fast as they can. Um, but you have an important interview. You have an important interview for a, a job that's really your dream job in five minutes. And being late is definitely not going to help your chances. Should you run after the thief? Common sense you should, says you should probably let that 20 bucks go, at least for now, right? Justice would certainly demand that you have your money, that you not have your money stolen. Uh, but it doesn't say that you should make the thief give the money back. Um, particularly if making the thief give the money back would do you more harm than good, right? You'd get the 20 bucks back, but lose the chance at your dream job. So it doesn't seem like morality or justice demands that you uh, go get your money back, that you get justice done if justice doesn't make you better off. Um, so saying that equality is good or that justice is good is not the same, say, it's not same thing as saying that equalization would be good or that seeking justice would be good. In fact, it might not even be appropriate, right? You could say that the world would be a better place if the thief had not stolen your money, but you're not yet committed to saying that someone something ought to be done to get it back. Um, so same thing when it comes to equalization and equality, right? Just because um, the world might be a better place if we all had more equal stuff or equal shares and stuff, doesn't really follow that we ought to try to equalize shares or even that we're permitted to do so. Um, Equalization and equality are two different ideas, and the fact that one would be good doesn't yet tell us where the, where, whether the other is permitted yet. All right. Now, let's say that equalization is good. Let's say that uh, in any particular case it would be good to equalize certain outcomes. Uh, it's a mistake to think that equalization is the same thing as a concern for human suffering. These are two different things. Right? The fact that you care about people and the fact that you want equality are actually two very different things, although a lot of people tend to confuse them. Right? Egalitarianism, right, a concern for equality, is a fundamentally comparative notion. It's comparative because it's concerned how we fare relative to one another. Um, a concern for those who suffer is not con a concern about how one person fares relative to one another. It's a concern about well-being. Right? So if everybody is well off, we don't have to worry about suffering. But everybody may not be equally well off, we might still have to worry about equality. And so um, a concern for equalization is not the same thing as a concern for human suffering. Right? Schmidt says humanitarianism is not the same thing as egalitarianism. Finally, um, and this I think is the most important part of, of Schmidt's uh, chapters on equality, is that the kind of equality that matters depends a whole lot on uh, the context that you're in, right? The type of equality that's needed in a classroom setting is different from the type of equality that's needed uh, in a sports or athletic setting, and those two are completely different from what's needed in a society, right? So uh, the types of rules that you need uh, are highly affected by the context that you're in. Uh, another way of saying it is that the types of rules that you need and the types of values that you care about depend a whole lot on the purpose of the activity in question. Right? The main purpose of the classroom, the main purpose of uh, grading people in college is to certify knowledge. Right? Uh, the main, my main purpose in life, um, or at least in my job, is to certify that students have achieved a certain level of knowledge or a certain level of 
critical thinking uh, in the classes that I teach. Uh, equality here means that for equal knowledge, right, or equal critical thinking, uh, students should get equal certification. That is to say, they should get an A, a B, a C, or whatever they, they deserve, or whatever they have earned, based on the knowledge that they have displayed and the skills that they've uh, acquired. Now, uh, that's very different from, say, a sporting event, right? Uh, for most sporting events, uh, the point is to know which team or individual is better, right? Which team wins, right? The purpose of equality here is very different, right? It's not to uh, make sure that for equal um, performance, people get equal results. Um, it's to say that uh, equality applies um, equal, I'm sorry, that the same rules apply to each contestant, right? A, a sporting contest is fair to the degree that um, contestants uh, compete on a, we could say, a level playing field, but what we really mean is that they um, have the same rules applied to them, right, as every other contestant. We don't really say equal playing field because obviously people come to sports with very different natural abilities, different levels of training, and so on and so forth, and we don't think that makes the competition any less fair because one person um, uh, has a lot more ability, right? Um, Finally, let's compare those two kinds of equality to the types of equality that's needed in society. Um, what's the main purpose of living in society together, right? It's not to certify knowledge, not to find out who's best. Um, it's to live well, Schmitz thinks, right? It's to live a good life. And Schmitz wants to ask what kind of equality is needed in order to make sure that people live good lives. Equal shares is a bit of a problem. Uh, for one person to get more, other people have to get less. Right? That doesn't sound like it's making people live better lives necessarily. It might, but um, not necessarily. Uh, equal opportunities, which is very a very popular uh, standard of equality as far as judging societies, is also problematic for Schmitz. Right? Equal opportunities matter when relative success matters. Right? Remember that equality is a comparative notion. Right? Um, we care about equality because people one person has more than another, but. The point of opportunities is not to, and the point of society is not to be better than one another, right? It's to live well and to do well. So it's not relative success that matters, but it's absolute levels of success that matters, right? So um, what matters, Schmitz thinks, is the quality of opportunities people have, not their comparative distribution. So for Schmitz, living well, living well in society means uh, living in a society that promotes a uh, the creation of many quality opportunities for everyone. All right, so what does that mean for the role of equality in society? Well, it means the political equality is very important. Um, the law, it's important the law treats people um, the same um, in order, and it, actually, let me rephrase that. Uh, it's important that, it's important to get rid of laws that treat people differently um, because they're trying to stop others from having opportunities, right? Laws that treat people differently in order to stop them from having opportunities are morally wrong, right? So laws that treat people differently on the basis of race merely to privilege uh, white people at the expense of black people are clearly morally wrong. Uh, they're wrong because, uh, as we said before, they tr fail, a central distributor is failing to equally respect uh, people who are otherwise entirely equal. So the reason that political equality is more important than social or economic equality is that in politics there is a central distributor of rights and duties, right? Um, a central distributor which will be the legislature or the legal system in general. Whereas in the economy or in society there really isn't a central distributor, right? Well, let's think about societal, a social uh, example for a minute. We don't object to an unequal distribution of mates right, uh, in society, precisely because we know that there is no central distributor, right, whether it be um, significant others or just friends, uh, there isn't a central distributor of these things, and so the fact that some people have more and some people have less isn't really uh, a topic of, of great moral interest, right, or at least not, um, not the subject of justice, right, so on the other hand, you could imagine that if the government arranged marriages, um, we'd be a lot more aggravated if we got treated unequally. But given that each of us has a right to choose who we marry and who we are friends with, 
Um, the fact that somebody picks somebody else over you is kind of unfortunate and it may make you sad, but it's not really an injustice because you recognize that they have a right to do so. Uh, and I think the same, uh, arguably, is true for incomes, right? People start their jobs at different times with different employers under different circumstances. Um, and those employers have different things for you to do, different productive capabilities that uh, they can help you take advantage of, um, which means that different incomes, even from mostly the same work, is not really a sign of unequal respect because different people are treating you differently, not the same person. So what matters is that you and I do well from the jobs that we do get, not that we do equally well for the same job. Why is that? Because society is not a race. Society is not a classroom. All right, so there's a lot to think about here. Uh, but if Schmitz is right about inequality, um, then there are many kinds of inequality in society that aren't a sign of disrespect and aren't a threat to our well-being. Um, and only those inequalities that are signs of disrespect and are threats to our well-being are the ones worth